Now I'm sure you'd have been told so many times just how amazing DNA is. I mean, after all, it's the secret to life itself. But how exactly does this special molecule make all living organisms from a simple bacterium to a human being? Well, first, before we understand how it works, we need to know more about its structure. Now, the structure of DNA may look really complex, but actually, it's quite simple. Its shape is a double helix, which is a twisted ladder. Each side of the ladder is a strand. It's a polymer. It's made up of many repeating units of nucleotides. The nucleotides come in four slightly different versions, and each DNA strand is a long chain of these nucleotides, so we call each strand a polynucleotide, or a nucleic acid. You're going to come across some other nucleic acids as well in the course. You've got DNA, we'll talk about now. You've also got RNA, which is another type of nucleic acid. And actually ATP is also a nucleic acid. All of these molecules are made up of nucleotides. But let's look at the structure of DNA. So what nucleotides make DNA? Well, all nucleotides have three components, phosphate, sugar, and a base. The sugar in DNA is deoxyribose. It's a pentose sugar. The base is a nitrogenous base which means contains nitrogen, and there are two groups of bases you get in DNA. You get purines, which have two rings to their structure, and you get pyrimidines, which have one ring in their structure. In DNA, there are four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Now, cytosine and thymine, C and T, are the pyrimidines, whilst adenine and guanine, A and G, are the purines. Now, each nucleotide is linked to the next one, by a condensation reaction. You remove water and you can link on another nucleotide to make our polynucleotide to make our strand of DNA. When you link one to the next, you form a new bond called a phosphodiester bond. To make DNA, you need two polynucleotides. You need one for each side of the molecule, okay? And they arrange themselves in anti-parallel strands. So whilst one is going in one direction, the other strand is going in the other direction. Okay, a purine base always pairs with a pyrimidine base. So this means A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. And this is called complementary base pairing. And they're joined together. You hold the two strands together like this, the anti-parallel strands, with some hydrogen bonds, okay, between the bases. You get three between C and G and two between A and T. I like to think about it as T for two, G for three, okay? Now, in order to explain the direction of strands, in order to describe it, we talk about the terms five prime to three prime, okay? The end with the spare phosphate sticking out of it is our five prime end, and the other end is the three prime end. And that is essentially the structure of DNA.